A new Las Vegas hotel and casino struggles while unpopular fees on the Strip spike even higher. Super Bowl fever descends on Las Vegas despite the continuing hangover from last year's F1. A new controversial law takes effect on the Strip. More tunnels are coming underneath Las Vegas. The unions continue to play hardball all while we get ready to say goodbye to more Las Vegas icons. Whew, there's a lot to talk about during this Las Vegas update for February 2024. Let's get into it. February is a great time to visit Las Vegas. There's a lot going on and temperatures are starting to rise as winter gradually loses its grip on the city. You know, the average daily high temperatures increase over the course of the month from about 61 degrees to 68 degrees. And that's a big difference, especially for us vegans. So while it's warming up, still make sure to bring layers. Let's jump right in with some of the hype going on with Las Vegas right now. You know, there's more disruptions on the strip and this is the uh, Super Bowl edition. Traffic disruptions and construction have become pretty much a commonplace on the Strip. And now we are living through the Super Bowl edition, y'all. With this year's Super Bowl in Las Vegas on February 11th, construction for the big game events is ongoing. CBS, the broadcaster of this year's Super Bowl, is setting up shop with four stages atop the Bellagio Fountains. Expect lane closures, sidewalk shutdowns, and pedestrian detours. Full road closures around Allegiant Stadium have already started and will extend until mid-February. And uh, one Want to go to Allegiant and watch the Super Bowl in person? <laughs> well, Super Bowl tickets are currently going for about $10,000 and up. <laughs> That's right. And hotel roommates are reportedly running higher than they did for last year's Formula One. That's cray cray. Resort fees are a touchy subject in Las Vegas, and this latest news won't help matters. According to recent reports, resort fees have moved even higher on the Las Vegas Strip. Vital Vegas reported that MGM has raised their resort fees across many of their properties. For example, Aria, Bellagio, Cosmopolitan, MGM Grand, and Vidara have raised their fees by $5 per night, reaching a new milestone of $50 before taxes. A new ghost town on the Strip? Oh boy, rumors are circulating about potential troubles at the Fontainebleau. With key executives leaving and reports of low foot traffic, the shiny new Mega's Resort might be facing some serious challenges. In some respects, the massive new Fontainebleau is starting to look like it may turn out to be more of a shiny new ghost town on the far north end of the Strip. So will Fontainebleau's Vegas gamble ultimately pay off or will it turn into a massive failure? Well, only time will tell. And in the meantime, make a note of this. We just did an amazing full review of what you can expect over at the Fontainebleau. We'll leave a link in the description box below. Hey, take a second and hit that thumbs up button, subscribe button, and leave us a comment. We'd greatly appreciate it. Elon Musk's boring company is making significant strides in expanding the Vegas Loop transportation system in Las Vegas. Recently, the company acquired 1.8 acres of land near the University of Nevada Las Vegas campus, signaling its commitment to expand its Vegas tunnel system. You can have a country experience in the heart of Vegas. That's right, Blake Sheldon's four story country dream restaurant and music venue Old Red is now open in front of the Horseshoe on Center Strip. They're offering the full country experience with food, drink, and live entertainment on two stages. Now Old Red looks as though it may become set to be the new go-to spot for country lovers. In honor of the Year of the Dragon, the Bellagio Conservatory and Botanical Gardens recently opened its new display. With an Asian theme, the display features lion dogs, a money tree, Cashin children dancing on a wooden bridge over a lotus pond, and of course, dragons of all shapes and sizes. It's a celebration of prosperity and good fortune. And best of all, it's always free. The Vegas unions play hardball. As of the date of recording this video, the Culinary and Bartenders Union have set a strike deadline for February 2nd, right before the Super Bowl week kicks off in Vegas. While the union previously reached agreements with MGM, Caesars and Wynn right before Formula One Las Vegas, 7,000 workers across 21 properties on the Strip and downtown are still without contracts. The union recently announced a quote-unquote tentative contract agreement with Westgate covering over a thousand workers and we're hopeful other properties will quickly follow their lead, perhaps even before the release of this video. Strip Icon closes again. The Mirage Volcano has been closed again, y'all, this time to make way for the Paramount Mountain, which will be showcased during the Super Bowl. We expect the volcano to reopen once after the Super Bowl, but its days remains numbered, with the Hard Rock transition expected to start ramping up 
Cup later this year. Are the A's Tropicana Stadium plans in limbo? There are new questions about the plans for the Oakland A's Stadium on the Tropicana site. Now, according to reports, the team missed a deadline to release specific plans and funding for the project, potentially jeopardizing the agreed upon public bonds. However, the CEO of the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority suggests that the current tentative plans may be enough to satisfy the league and secure the A's revenue sharing status for 2024. However, according to reports, the tentative ballpark plans are already being changed as the initially planned retractable roof is rumored now to be a fixed dome. The aftermath of the Formula One construction has left a sour taste in the mouths of many local businesses. With disruptions leading to near bankruptcy for some, a representative has recently stepped forward to seek redress from the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority. The proposal? A small business recovery fund to reimburse nine businesses that lost an estimated $23 million. With businesses like Ferraro's and the Stage Door Casino claiming significant revenue losses, it's clear that the impact of the Grand Prix was far-reaching. And we will definitely bring you more further updates on this as it develops, so stay tuned. Stop and stare? Well, not on the Strip's pedestrian bridges. Next time you're on a pedestrian bridge over the Las Vegas Strip, remember to keep moving. Why? A new ordinance makes stopping for anything but incidental and fleeting viewing a misdemeanor punishable by up to $1,000 fine and six months in jail. What? I know, and the rule also applies up to 20 feet from where the overpasses connect to strip sidewalks. There's a new strip hotel. On the ropes? When Resort's proposed new hotel tower on the strip is facing potential cancellation, as the Clark County Building Department staff have recommended against a five-year extension on the project's previously approved plan. Wynn argues that the extension would allow for further strategic development planning for the proposed 640-foot hotel tower across the strip from the current Wynn Encore. The future of the project may now hang in the balance as the County Zoning Commission plans to make their decision during their April meeting. All aboard the job train! Get ready for construction of the high-speed Brightline Rail connection from Southern California to Las Vegas. Brightline recently received $3 billion in funding from the Federal Department of Transportation and now the Southern Nevada Building Trades Union are on the hunt for 11,000 workers to construct this 220 mile line. Now the Bright Line is targeting to complete the project by summer 2028. So who's next to perform at the Sphere? Even better question, who do you want to see perform next at the Sphere? Love to know your answer, so leave that in the comments below. Now according to a recent poll by Casino.org, Lady Gaga is the top pick, followed by Beyonce and Coldplay? Yep, pop, rock, and hip-hop are the most desired genres. So with U2 finishing its residency in early March and Fish set for mid-April, we're looking forward to seeing who might take the stage next. So Nevada just got a new state park? Yes, we did, and it's called Ice Age Fossil State Park, located about 30 minutes from downtown Las Vegas, and it recently opened up to visitors. Once home to mammoths, lions, the park is currently open on Saturdays and Sundays, and admission is $3, while children under 12 get in for free. Farewell, au revoir, terrible. Terribles. Yep, Terribles Hotel and Casino, formerly known as the Gold Strike, has met its unfortunate demise after being closed for over two years. The property, located about 25 miles from the Las Vegas Strip, was a popular pit stop for travelers and a local hangout. However, the major players in the industry have no plans for the site, and the new owner, Tolls Development, will be transforming it into an industrial park. So construction on the first phase will begin soon, with the aim of attracting trucking companies due to its convenience location and route from California. The iconic Diamond Motel, a strip staple since 1940, is set for auction this March. Known for its pink elephant, a Disneyland transplant from the 1950s, the motel has been a quirky landmark for decades. The property itself spans about 1.36 acres and is expected to fetch a hefty sum following the sale of its neighboring site for $12.8 million in 2022. Country music legend Reba McIntyre, along with rapper, singer, actor Post Malone, and R&B soul singer Andrew Day will be performing in the pregame ceremony at the Super Bowl on February 11th in Las Vegas. Reba, a three-time Grammy winner and Country Music Hall of Famer, will have the honor of singing the national anthem. And of course, Usher will be headlining the halftime show. It's gonna be so lit here in Las Vegas. The 
week of the Super Bowl. And of course, Las Vegas is hosting several events leading up to the Super Bowl. The week begins with Super Bowl opening night at Allegiant Stadium on February 5th, where fans can interact with players and coaches. Tickets to the event cost $30. The NFL's Super Bowl experience will take place at the Mandalay Bay Convention Center from February 7th to the 10th, offering fans the opportunity to meet league stars, view Super Bowl rings, and the Lombardi Trophy, and participate in football skill challenges. Children under 12 can attend for free, while adult tickets range from $25 to $50, depending on the day. Now, in anticipation of the Super Bowl, CBS will launch a week-long residency in front of Bellagio. The multi-platform coverage will include sports, news, and entertainment, which shows like the NFL Today, CBS Mornings, and the Drew Barrymore Show broadcasting live from the location. The boss is back, y'all. That's right, Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band are set to return to Vegas for the first time in over two decades. The legendary rockers will perform at T-Mobile on March 22nd. Tool is performing at T-Mobile Arena on February 18th, and Bad Bunny will perform at the venue for two nights, February 23rd and 24th. And uh, Madonna will kick off the month of March at T-Mobile on March 1st and 2nd. Smile like you mean it. The Killers return home. Yes, The Killers, the iconic rock band founded in Las Vegas, are set to rock their hometown once again with an eight-day mini residency at Caesars in August. Celebrating 20 years of their debut album, Hot Fuss, the band's gonna play the album in its entirety, featuring hits like Mr. Brightside and Somebody Told Me. Love those songs. Despite their global fame and success, their shows in Vegas always have a special homecoming vibe. We've been to several of them and we can definitely say that's true. Songwriters Jewel and Melissa Etheridge are teaming up on a tour this summer and fall. So the tour will make a stop in Vegas for one night only on July 24th at the Pearl Theater in the Palms. Tickets are now on sale starting at $41, but that doesn't include the fees and taxes. Get ready to rock and roll as the 27th annual Viva Las Vegas Rockabilly Music Festival returns to the Orleans. Did you know it's the longest running music festival in Las Vegas? and the largest rockabilly event globally. It's totally a fun event for music lovers with 75 bands, 25 DJs, a burlesque showcase, vintage fashion show, and more. Remember that funny movie featuring John Favreau called Chef? Well, Chef Roy Choi and actor John Favreau have teamed up to open Chef Truck, a food truck at the Park MGM. And it's inspired by their hit movie, Chef. And the menu is going to feature, amongst other things, the classic Cubano sandwich. Wait, the best sandwich in the world is now and Vegas? A world-renowned sandwich shop from Florence, Italy, Alantica Vinayo, which claims to offer the best sandwiches in the world, has recently opened at the Sundry Food Hall at the Uncommons. They're known for their freshly baked Tuscan flatbread and Italian specialties. We're definitely looking forward to seeing if this place lives up to the hype, and you know we will let y'all know. Stay tuned. Abracadabra! Nathan Burton at Flyover. Illusionist Nathan Burton is now performing at a new stage for his magic at the flyover attraction on the South Strip. So the intimate 140 c theater is hosting his 70 minute show with ticket prices ranging from $22 to $52. So if you are looking for a fun and fast paced magic show on the strip, well, this may be worth checking out. And speaking of illusionists, David Blaine has brought his new residency impossible to the Encore Theater at Wynn Las Vegas with nine performances through 2024. Tickets are now on sale. Now, I don't know how I feel about this one, but the King returned to Vegas. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Get ready for a blast from the past as an AI-powered Elvis Presley show, Elvis Evolution, is set to debut in Vegas. So the virtual performances promises a mix of holographic projection, augmented reality, live theater, and multi-sensory effects. Now that sounds cool AF, but if it's anything like Whitney Houston's show where audiences can expect a surreal experience that blurs the lines between reality and illusion, well, I'm not sure they hit the mark on that one one for us. We went to go see the Whitney Houston holographic projection show when it was at Harris, which we really enjoyed being able to listen to Whitney Houston music and watch the show's performance. We admittedly found it to be quite creepy and it didn't really look like Whitney Houston. <laughs> 
The Luxor's new Play Playground is now open. This unique 15,000 square foot facility features over 20 larger than life nostalgic games designed for adult style play dates. Now, while it's open to all ages during the day, it is adults only after dark. And we're looking forward to checking out this new playground on the strip. The prestigious Copa America Soccer Championship is coming to the US in 2024. Three games, including a semifinal, will be held at Allegiant Stadium. Get ready, soccer fans. It's coming to Vegas. The the alternative rock band Third Eye Blind is set to perform at the Fontainebleau Las Vegas on June 22nd as part of their Summer Gods Tour 2024. Known for their Billboard Hot 100 hits, the band promises a night of nostalgia and rock and roll at the new Blue Live Theater. After a successful run at Park and Jam, Grammy-winning band Maroon 5 is set to return for another 16-show residency at Dolby Live. The show's gonna kick off on May 17th. Raw, 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 Wu-Tang Clan to bring the ruckus to Vegas. Yup, I said it, hip hop legends, the Wu-Tang Clan are set to perform four shows at The Virgin next year. Tickets are on sale now. Avengers Assemble, somewhere else. The Marvel Avengers station attraction at Treasure Island has shut its doors. The interactive exhibit, which opened in 2016, paved the way for many immersive attractions that have since popped up around Vegas. Now we're sad to see this go because we're Marvel fans, but looking forward to finding out what will replace it at Treasure Island. Hey, if you have some tips or suggestions you think others coming to Las Vegas during the month of February would appreciate, we'll leave them in the comments below. And be sure to check out our full review of the Fontainebleau Las Vegas. You might want to watch that before staying there. All right, y'all. We'll see you in the next one.